Hi, hi everyone. My name is Andy. Uh, I'm going to present you with some uh, offensive security testing. Um, in this presentation, I will uh, briefly introduce you to the uh, ground segment and the software that we use uh, on it. Uh, I will focus on one particular software, which is the mission control system. And I will um, show you some, ex some uh, vulnerabilities which we have found on those uh, software applications and then give you a couple of demos on uh, how we managed to exploit them. So um, ground segment consists of many uh, interconnected components uh, or elements. You can see in this orange on this orange part um, where exactly it lies in the in the uh, in the mission um, in the in the space mission. Uh, it consists of different elements. Uh, the, all those elements uh, perform different functions but they all depend on each other, uh, either by receiving input from or sending output to other components. However, most of those components, they don't require any user interaction. And this is what brings us to the mission control system, uh, which is the main interface. Um, it is the main interface between the ground station uh, and, the, and other components. Uh, it, is also, it also serves as um, primary interface between the, uh, between, between the spacecraft controllers and, um, and the space, spacecraft itself, which uh, I would argue is the, it makes it the most vulnerable system in the whole ground segment. As, uh, as we know, the weakest link of every information system is humans. So for decades, uh, the space missions were, were operated from uh, dedicated mission control rooms, uh, accessible only by uh, specific, um, only by the spacecraft controllers. And this, however, has changed recently, mainly due to COVID. Um, and the organization started opening up and letting their users or their uh, spacecraft operators to conduct operations uh, remotely. So this, of course, creates a new attack surface for, uh, for the mission control system, which is usually a uh, very outdated software and vulnerable to typical, um, typical vulnerabilities which we have on any other software uh, that we use on a daily basis. So what is being done about it? Um, from, the community, from the space community perspective, obviously we expand strategies and include um, security, uh, to include security aspects. We impose uh, security policies, and then we also introduce security requirements to our systems. Um, however, I don't think it's gonna be enough at this point. And as we'll see later, there is one uh, very specific element that is missing into those um, into the actions, which is the offensive security testing. So um, every organization uh, has a, their own mission control system. They try to develop their own uh, software because, uh, you know, what, as they say, the space is hard, right? So uh, they have to do it themselves. So um, some of that software is open source. So what we have done, we decided to have a look at it and see how they perform from the uh, from the vulnerability standpoint. And here is what we have found out. Uh, for full disclosure, all those vulnerabilities have been already disclosed uh, using the, um, contacting the vendor and they, they have been already, already addressed and, um, and all of them have CVE assigns, assigned. So on uh, NASA OpenMCT, we have found a couple of vulnerabilities such as uh, prototype pollution, XSS and CSRF. On the IMCS, which is another mission control system, it is one of the more established ones. One, um, we have found uh, a few more vulnerabilities, such as directory traversal, uh, arbitrary file deletion, session hijacking, and uh, a few XSS vulnerabilities. And then on NASA AIT Core, we have found, and NASA AIT Core is like a framework to develop ground, ground segment software um, by different missions. We have found SQL injection, uh, a few, local code executions and also um, realize that the encryption in the communication is completely missing. So as you've seen before, the, most of those vulnerabilities, they don't have that um, much of an impact on the mission. However, this is where the chaining of vulnerabilities come in play. And in case of the MCS, we decided to combine directed traversal with session hijacking and XSS. And that led us to quite severe sens sensitive information disclosure because now the attackers can, when, when they trigger, when the XSS is triggered, the attackers can actually retrieve any arbitrary file that is stored on the MCS server. 
So uh, here is a, let's have a look at a typical scenario. Um, so this is like an, at a very high level overview of a space mission. You have a space segment from right to left, you have a space left, you have a space segment. There is a ground station, there is the IMCS, which is the mission control system uh, in subject that is, um, that is used by Bob uh, to send telemetry, uh, send telecommands and receive telemetry from spacecraft. We also have Alice that is working with Bob and the whole organization has a publicly facing website. Now we also have an attacker and that is, um, that has a C2 server. Now, as it usually goes, there is a recon and phishing campaign. Uh, the adversaries learn about Alice from the um, public website. They decide to uh, target her with um, phishing campaign. Alice takes the bait. Uh, unfortunately, she either clicks on a link or opens a Word document, and that deploys the C2 beacon uh, on her workstation, this way uh, making her workstation compromised. Um, the attackers now have access to her workstation. They learn about Bob um, through her emails, and they decided to target Bob with an uh, eternal phishing campaign. They uh, sent him an email with uh, some payload that would trigger the XSS, and they do it as Alice. So uh, Bob trusts Alice. He um, executes the payload that triggers the XSS. That XSS then, uh, because there, are, um, there is a session hijacking vulnerability, and the tra traver traverse director vulnerability um, that triggers the, um, this, this lets the attackers to retrieve all, any arbitrary file on, uh, on the LCS server. Now, if Bob has access to the internet, uh, the files can be directly retrieved and, and sent to attacker workstation. Otherwise, um, if Bob is behind the firewall or is using VPN, uh, we can use Alice workstation to um, as a proxy and then retrieve the files using the CTB beacon. So I have prepared a short demo how that would look like in practice. So what you will see here, this is our, this is the exploit we developed. Um, it generates a payload that will end up uh, being sent to the, to the Bob and Bob will uh, actually use that payload and uh, because he thought that it was received from Alice load it on the MCS and then that would trigger our exploit chain. So first this exploit generates the payload, which is called XVIL, uh, XVILJS, and also starts the HTTP server. Bob is gonna load that file on the MCS server. Imagine that is one of the telemetry displays that Alice decided to share with him. So he loads the file and he decides to open it. And that's all he sees. Now, under the hoods, there was an XSS triggered that would retrieve the file and then send it back because of the directed traversal and send back the, back the content to the HTTP server that was started by, um, that was started by the attacker. So here, like in any uh, any example of for proof of concept, you can see we got the access to Etsy password file content. So that's um, combining those vulnerabilities is actually quite easy. So the whole exploit is easy. So next up is the uh, vulnerability chain, the, the exploit chain uh, for NASA EIT core. Um, combining one of the local execution, a uh, code execution and missing, missing encryption, we managed to uh, conduct the man in the middle attack and inject our own payload uh, into the, into the uh, communication um, string, which, uh, which then is triggered on the telemetry client and then is executed, giving us the reverse shell. So I'll quickly start another demo and explain what you see. Sir, can we get the mic a little closer to you? Like this? Yep. Okay. Okay, so basically what you see here on the left side, uh, you have, on the top left side, you have telemetry client. On the left, 
uh, bottom side you have telemetry simulator that is both are provided by the AIT core. On the right side you have our exploit on the top and then on the bottom side, on the right bottom you have the Nescas list that is going to grab the, or is going to receive the reverse shell. So we start the telemetry client first on the, on the left side. Now this is what would normally be happening on the mission control or on the ground station. Then we start telemetry uh, simulator, which will generate some telemetry packets as if they were coming down from spacecraft. We start our uh, netcast listener, and you can see on the left hand side, on the left hand side, we already have started receiving some telemetry from the simulator. Then we run our exploit that is conducting the man in the middle attack. And then the first frame, so we have injected our frame and the first frame, so the first frame that is sent from telemetry simulator to the ground station is caught um, by the man in the middle attack. There we injected our payload, which you can see down here as well. And that was actually executed and it was triggered and it gives us, it gave us the reverse shell uh, to the telemetry client running on the mission control. So that's another proof of concept. Sorry about that. So just for reference, we have um, this is split um, between dynamic, static and dynamic uh, analysis, which we have done on those systems. Um, it is still important to conduct static analysis because as you can see, uh, the low hanging fruits and many other vulnerabilities are found uh, using those, but they will, static analysis will not, uh, will, will not catch everything. So you have to conduct the dynamic an an analysis and then you have to try to uh, conduct the exploitation phase. Um, in case of SCOS 2000, SCOS 2000 is one of the main mission control systems developed by, uh, by European Space Agency. Uh, we haven't done any um, extensive analysis on the system, any vulnerability research. We only run the flow finder on it and using the static, static code analysis, you can see, uh, I'm pretty sure that at least one of those uh, almost 2,500 buffer overflow uh, vulnerabilities would be exploitable. So uh, in conclusions, um, the point I'm trying to make is that the space applications are still not properly being tested from the offensive security standpoint. Um, the best way is to uh, hire a service to do it properly, or you can also, or you, you can also try to do it yourself. But you have to do it, and you have to include it in your frameworks. And uh, you should do it before uh, the adversaries do it for you. So as I mentioned before, all that research was already published. So here you can find, um, I guess the slides will be uh, provided afterwards so we can, we can have a look at the publications. Otherwise, if you want the links uh, today, you can hit me up after the, after the talk and I'll give it to you. And that was it. Thank you very much.